You want me to put that on my todger? This one's wife. No divorce. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. The marriage between Prince Harry and his handler invites frequent speculation as to its current state. An outlet called She Knows, with an article by Maggie Clancy, tells us, There's one main reason this one's wife and Prince Harry are not divorcing, and it has nothing to do with their love. Well, let's dive in and find out whether this individual's observation is correct and what it is that's preventing them from going towards divorce. It seems that every other day, a new rumour concerning an impending divorce between this one's wife and Prince Harry starts to circulate. And while the couple's public appearances suggest that the two are going strong, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex aren't immune to the pitfalls of marriage experienced by the masses. Now, pausing there. No marriage is unicorns and glitter and rainbows all of the time. The reason why, as I've observed in the marriages of many other people, is that the world gets in the way. People suffer bereavement. They become ill, possibly long-term illness. They have financial pressures. They may lose their job. There are a variety of factors caused by the world which places pressure upon that marriage. So if somebody loses their job, that puts the household finances under pressure. It could mean that the individual concerned doesn't feel motivated to try and find a new job. They feel underappreciated, it has shaken their confidence, and the other individual feels that a lot of pressure has been placed upon them now as the sole breadwinner, and they start to resent the fact that their spouse isn't pulling their weight in job hunting. The spouse that isn't looking for a job because perhaps they become depressed feels that they're not being supported by the other spouse, and therefore problems can occur. But whilst there are lots of these different pitfalls that come along as a consequence of what the external world throws at a couple, they are not intrinsic to the individuals themselves. And therefore, where you have two individuals who have emotional empathy, invariably the relationship will endure. Yes, it will have its ups and downs, but they're not like the peaks and troughs that are experienced in the narcissistic dynamic. They are the periods of difficulty. It's a more undulating course, and there'll be long periods where there are no issues whatsoever. The reason being, neither of the parties are narcissists, therefore they don't need control, they don't need to draw fuel, they don't engage in abusive, manipulative behaviours. The fact is that the marriage of the Duke and Duchess of Sussex isn't about the pitfalls of marriage experienced by the masses, but instead is governed by the dynamic between a narcissist and the intimate partner primary source victim, something that many individuals fail to understand, and particularly those that write articles such as this. But let us continue to see what magical item it is that is apparently going to prevent divorce. But even if the two aren't seeing eye to eye when it comes to their romantic life, one royal expert believes that they will stay together, at least publicly, for the long run. Like former couples Jada Pinkett Smith and Will Smith, not exactly the best of examples I would suggest, and Meryl Streep and Don Gummer, Alderson believes that the two will stay together for some time, even if their relationship is strained. For starters, the media attention surrounding the end of their relationship will be difficult to deal with and they have their children to look out for, royal expert Luella Alderson explained to the Daily Mirror. Should this one's wife disengage from Harry, which would result in divorce, she doesn't care about the media attention. She will court it. It's all fuel for her. Yes, there may be some criticism of her, but you know that she will milk it in terms of making out that he's the abuser and that she is the victim of his behaviour towards her. And therefore, that's not going to pose a problem for her narcissism to address. There will be the pretense of wanting to shield the children, but she doesn't care about them because she's a narcissist. All that will matter is the fact that Harry has outlived his purpose, he is disengaged from, and therefore she will blame him and play the victim. 
Alderson continues by explaining, Harry and this one's wife make a lucrative team. Well, not as lucrative as it once was, and their joint ventures have the potential to continue bringing a substantial income for their family. Alderson continued, Well, I'm not sure that that's entirely accurate. After all, what was the main thing that people were interested in? Prince Harry, not her. She's just this one's wife. Furthermore, they're only interested in learning about what went on within the royal family and Megxit, etc. And they've rather milked that to death. Thereafter, they haven't got anything else left. If they had managed to extract sufficient money relating to those experiences, then kept their head down and perhaps invested wisely, they may then have been able to enjoy a private life and done some charitable work, but largely do so away from the prying eyes of the world. And most people would have let them get on with it because they weren't getting in everybody's faces. The problem that they've got is, because of the importance of the residual benefit of money, she needs to get it. And the difficulty they've got is, where's it going to come from? They can't continue to milk the royal stories. That's been done to death. And there's no fresh content because the royal family, sensibly, won't have anything to do with them. Nobody is offering them deals. They've seen how useless their output is. They've seen how lazy they are. They see their unpopularity. And as I've mentioned many times, what brand or organisation is going to risk millions of dollars punting it on these two? Accordingly, to suggest that they're a lucrative team and their joint ventures have the potential to continue bringing in substantial income is, quite frankly, incorrect. Alderson continues, stating, while they have their individual endeavours, their partnership has proven to be beneficial for both of them professionally too. If they were to split, it could potentially impact their careers. What careers? They don't have any, especially as a couple who have brands built on their relationship. But as I have explained, the usefulness of that brand has more or less expired. And what's more than likely is the fact that this one's wife is going to see that Harry no longer serves a purpose. And she won't blame herself for milking it. She will essentially say he's not done enough to bring money into the family kitty and that it's as a consequence of his behaviour that people have turned against them. And she will quite readily just spit him out with the expectation of finding somebody else. Indeed, she's likely to find somebody else that can support her financially. And once that's done, she will get rid of Harry. In the meantime, there is still some money that's being made. But the pipeline looks pretty thin. And therefore, to suggest that their partnership will continue to be beneficial, yes, it has previously. It's been beneficial for her as this one's wife, because without him, she'd be a nobody. But they've reached that critical point, whereby neither of them have any talent, they're not able to build businesses, their charitable works are laughable, and therefore, the only reason that people were interested in them was because of the royal connection, which has withered on the vine, and also the stories about when they were in the royal family, which they've told them all. And therefore, what more is there to offer? What more does the brand have? It doesn't have anything more to provide. And furthermore, they're pretty unpopular. This shared commitment to their humanitarian work and their desire to make a positive impact may be the main reason they're sticking together. No, again, this is written by somebody who doesn't understand narcissism. The reason they're sticking together is that for the time being, the facade must be maintained and also because she doesn't have somebody to immediately jump to. Therefore, she will continue to use Prince Harry, even though he's in the sustained devaluation. Where the narcissist usually disengages, it's because somebody new is brought on board, so the existing incumbent is pushed to one side. She doesn't have that yet. Therefore, she will remain with Harry, because he's easy to control, tick that box. He still provides plenty of fuel, tick that box. The character traits have waned, but they still have a degree of use, tick that box. And the residual benefits, well, they aren't as great as they once were, but there are still some there. What her narcissism needs her to do is find a replacement. And when that happens, Harry will be out and a new person will be in. They're not sticking together for a shared commitment to humanitarian work. They're not sticking together with a shared desire to make a positive impact. That, again, is the misunderstanding that's put forward by somebody that doesn't understand the way that a narcissist, narcissistic dynamic works. The article continues by stating, to be clear, this doesn't mean that Prince Harry and this one's wife are only sticking together to maintain their brands as a couple and individually. 
Back in July, royal expert and friend of the family, improbably named Plastic Face Lieutenant Omid Scobie, quickly shut down rumours that the two were undergoing a trial separation. Even Alderson admitted that the two might simply be stressed from the constant media attention. Harry and this one's wife are constantly under scrutiny, with every move being analysed and interpreted. It could simply be a matter of them needing some time for themselves. Well, whilst the repeated challenges to her control don't help, again, it's not about needing more time. That, again, is written by someone's perspective whereby they don't realise that this is a narcissist and a victim. When you do, you're able to put to one side all this guff about, we need more time to ourselves, we need to avoid the constant media scrutiny, we need to ensure that the brands are preserved. That's all around the edges. What matters is, is he providing the prime aims better than anybody else? Initially, yes, he enters devaluation, and therefore he is at risk of disengagement, which, as I've told you, will eventually happen. Thus, to suggest that there's no divorce is ultimately going to be incorrect. It will happen. It's just a question of when. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.